All right. All right, ladies, let's give a little food for you. Here you are. Most ants can only eat liquid diets, so I mix up a little egg and vitamin powder and uh, proteins with a little sugar water. Is that what they eat in the wild? They look for mixtures of egg, protein, and vitamins and sugar water? No. In the wild, they'll do things like capture insects and chew them up, or get nectar from flowers. And some ants even keep huge herds of aphids, which they milk for their sweet secretions. Then they fill up their abdomens, bring it home, and bleh, regurgitate to feed their nestmates. Yuck! They'll just be careful not to get bitten, especially if they're red ants. Actually, color has nothing to do with an ant's behavior. Except stay away from red ants, right? It's just not true, my lengthy friend. In fact, there are red ants that are completely harmless, and black ants that are kind of dangerous. Are you sure about that? Because some guy on Facebook said they were naturally more aggressive. You know, Arb, you can find someone to tell you absolutely anything on Facebook. That doesn't mean that it's true. But he was wearing glasses, Adam. Glasses! Foiled again by my 2020 vision. <laughs> nah, I trust you, Adam. You are an ant scientist, after all. That guy on Facebook smells scented markers for a living. You know, actually, it's not just red and black. There are blue ants, green ants, gold ants. That gives me an idea. What do you say we do a little social experiment and draw some ants? I don't know where you're going with this, but hey, who doesn't love drawing ants? Right? Excellent. Well then, uh, I will meet you in the garden, and I will meet you guys in the garden as well. And I'll get to sketching. You guys at home can join me. Initiating a lap sequence in three, two, one. Getting under your skin to get you outside We got lots to do, so saddle up, let's ride Adding hard, brought plenty to do Get your science on and learn something new Listen to the family and friends Conservation, preservation, flowers attend Food, wet, seeds, stem, soil, and turf Lots we can do to protect the earth Get ready to go, we're about to begin We're gonna have fun from beginning to end How's it going, folks? So, today, I thought maybe we'd draw a couple of ants. Do you guys like to draw? Ah. Yeehaw. Let's do it. So, let's get out our paper and our pencils and do a little sketchifying. I'm going to start right here. Look, it's a little bright out here. Let me put on my groovy shades and start to draw. All right, you guys. So, we're going to draw an ant. So we're going to start by drawing a cute little head for our ant. So I think it's a little far away. I think we'll start right about here. So what I want you guys to draw is this weird little shape I've made right there. You see that? Kind of looks like a piece of bread. And that is going to be the head. But what we're going to want to add are these fearsome mandibles. Right there. Kind of looks like a bird, doesn't it? Like a beak or something like that. But from the side, it kind of does look like that. Now, our ant needs eyes, just like most things in nature need eyes. So we're going to put one right there. Fantastic. Now, yeah, Adam. That's looking really good, Jody. Oh, fantastic. So, oh, it looks fantastic. That's Chloe, Hello. by the way. Chloe, that's right. Sorry, Chloe. Get it together, Adam. Next. <laughs> what comes next, Adam? So after the head, what does come next? Is there anyone who can maybe tell us on a bug what comes next after the head? Begins with a T, the middle part of an insect, also known as the... 
I think they said they go. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think they got it there. Nice. There we go. So we're gonna draw that right up in here. A small little thing here, but we're gonna go ahead and put that four X in. And you know what I like to do? I like to start off by putting some little hairs and some little cilia on our ant. So we'll put some little, just some little things right there to make this ant really look like he's out in the wild. Very good. Then we are gonna do a little attention. What is this part called here? We are going to make this go all the way down. Draw this weird shape right here. It's looking good, Harv. Thank you, thank you. What do we think of this? So Adam, you told me that it doesn't really matter if it's a red ant or a black ant, that they're all kind of considered the same. Uh, are there any other creatures or anything like that that kind of have a bad reputation? You, you, you know, Harb, I'm really glad uh, just to hit home the part about the ants and then we're, we're looking for other creatures too. Um, it's just a common myth that uh, red ants are bad or aggressive and black ants are, are harmless and it's not true. Um, you can find red ants that are completely calm and black ants that uh, are kind of scary. And um, there, there's just a whole range of uh, different colors of ants and it doesn't affect their behavior. There are other things that affect ants' behaviors. Interesting. Um, I'm looking around the garden right now, looking for uh, some bees and wasps. I'm sure we'll find some in a minute. Ooh, uh, let's see. Got some neat coming up right here, Harv, Chloe, Marley. Let's see if we can take a look at this. Wow. Can we see? Uh, I'll find another one. What we were looking at right there um, was a hoverfly, which is a kind of fly that's completely harmless, but has black and yellow colors like a wasp, um, which has the effect of scaring some predators away. Interesting. I know if I saw those colors, I would be out of there. <clears throat> All right, let's get back to our ant. I'm going to get back in here. Sketchy, sketchy. Hmm. All right. So what I think we should add to our lovely ant are some legs, because right now he is just a bumbling, confused torso. So we are going to add some legs. Harv, while you guys are drawing, um, I have a little friend, I have a little, a tiny little wasp who's making a, a nest near my house. And uh, I come by and watch her every day. And I'm gonna see if we can go in and get a close up look at her. I think that's a great idea. We are just drawing some legs. Excellent. Look at this guy. Now all these legs are going to be coming out of the same place. So we're going to draw over a little bit what we've already drawn, but that's okay because we can erase it too. When you're drawing, don't worry about making mistakes because mistakes happen all the time and that's what we have erasers for, right? Sometimes I wish I had an eraser in real life for when I make mistakes. Actually, that sounds fantastic. Have I come up with something? For sure. Excellent. I'm gonna be a millionaire next time you see me. So we're gonna do a little bit of overlap. See how I erased some of the overlapping things? It's not a big deal. And we'll put another nice leg right back here. Hey, Harb, while you guys are doing that, can you see my little paper wasp friend? Whoa, yeah, super up close. Look at that. This is her little nest that she's making. And um, here she is resting. It's a very cloudy day at my house today. 
So a lot of the bees and wasps are kind of hanging out inside for now, but here she is just kind of sleeping, waiting for, for it to get a little warmer. That is amazing. So she's sleeping right now? She's sleeping right now, though I'm sure I've woken her up just a little bit. But, um, you know, you were talking about color and uh, some of the things that we associate with color. I just wanted to point out that um, I'm like two millimeters away from this wasp right now, and she's got the scary wasp colors, but um, she's being completely harmless to me. Wow. So you were right. It really doesn't have anything to do with what a bug looks like. Now, why are some wasps really crazy aggressive? I don't understand that. Well, certain species of wasp um, can be more aggressive, uh, but it also has a lot to do with their biology. So when you have wasps that have um, colonies with lots and lots of individuals, then they're more likely to be aggressive. And when you have wasps with very few individuals, they're less likely to be aggressive. That seems strange. I guess if I was living on my own and you broke into my house with a macro lens, I might be kind of aggressive, but well, uh, maybe less aggressive than if there was a thousand of me. S stick insects. I mean, once you're talking about Lord Howe Island stick insects, all bets are off the table. I guess that's true. So let's take a look at everyone's ants so far. I want to see. Cecilia, it looks beautiful. Skip some steps, I see, but you're a natural artist. Look how cute. All right. Cecilia, oh. love it. Chloe, look how cool. Oh, I love it. I love those big, giant mandibles you've drawn there. Those are oh, fantastic. Marley, that's wonderful. Oh, look at this. You guys have done such a great job. You've used your space so well. And we've got wow. a couple more things to draw on our ant. So I say we jump right back in, get to work. Pencils out. <laughs> All right, so I think we're missing a few legs here and that's no big deal. Well, it would be a big deal in real life, but I suppose if I woke up missing some limbs, I would have concerns. So here we go. We're gonna draw this leg coming up from behind. Up we go. And again, we're gonna do a little overlapping, but that's not a big deal. Because we've got our races. We're gonna bring it all the way down to here. Fantastic. Look at that. So then you take a little bit of a racer, get rid of your overlap. And see, I find that making overlapping shapes really makes a drawing look three-dimensional. And I love a good three-dimensional drawing because I, sadly, live only in the second dimension. And we'll put a little leg coming out the back there too. That's awesome. So one thing, like I said before, that I really like to do is add some texture. You guys know what texture is? Imagine if you rubbed your hand across sandpaper, what that would probably feel like. Pretty yucky, huh? Well, wonder what this ant would feel like if we were to rub our fingers over it. I bet it'd be a little hairy, have some cilia. It might be a little rough in some spots. So we are going to add some little hairs, just some little things to make this thing really pop. And I like to add just a couple little scuff marks like this ant has really seen some things. Really nice. Now, we are missing one thing on our ant, technically two. Does anybody know what that is? Folks, I know you know what this is. Gosh, I, I, wanna, I wanna give them a Antenna. hint, Mar. What did you say, Seth? Antenna. The antenna, yes. We're gonna draw some antennae on this bad boy and make sure that he is able to feel around his colony. Now, Adam, what are the antenna for? So Harb, the antenna are for sensing, perceiving the world, but there's one thing I wanted to bring up. I just heard you mention, we're gonna draw some antennae on this bad boy. And you know, I love the sentiment, but I do want everyone to know that all of our ants are, are ladies. What? Um, all the ants that we see running around, all the ants in the colony, all of them are girls. Um, now, why is that? Well, uh, in, in an ant society, also in a bees and wasp societies, 
ants, bees, and wasps are related. The boys are just made for mating. And after they mate, they die. All the workers are all females and sisters of one another. That is so cool. I got some brothers and sisters myself, but I have brothers and sisters, not just sisters. Well, then this bad lady is almost complete. We've got antennae. We have got some texture. We've got six, count them, six legs. And now I think it's time that we named this bad lady. What do we want to name? I think I'm gonna name mine. Hmm, that sounds good. I'm gonna name her. Large. Marge. <laughs> and then if anybody, if you join the buzz later on, you can tell them Large Marge sent you. <laughs> You're treating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet now. <laughs> uh, we're, we're breaking up. <laughs> can I ask a question? You may. I Please. We, Marley and I were talking that we feel like everyone always tries to tell you that it's the queens that are just sitting there on their throne and it's all the boy insects that do all the work. Is that like one of those huh. things you hear on Facebook that's wrong? Is one of those things on Facebook that couldn't be more wrong. Okay. And in, in fact, the queen does a lot of work when she sets up a colony. Um, most of them aren't successful. So when a, a colony is ready to reproduce and make a new colony, um, it makes some ants, uh, winged ants. Some of them are queens and some of them are males. And at a certain time of the year, and none of us know how the ants decide this, they force the winged forms out of the nest at the same time. And once they see the sunlight and uh, feel the wind, they take off and they start flying. And once they're in the air, they mate. After they mate, uh, the males die. Their only function in an ant society is done. Wow. And the queen lands and she tears off her wings, never to fly again. And then she goes and looks for a place to start a new nest and maybe it'll be in the soil, maybe it'll be in some wood and she'll seal herself off um, from the outside world and she'll lay eggs in there and she'll raise them completely on her own stored energy. So she'll regurgitate again, but just like a mother bird does to her babies. She'll regurgitate to feed them. And when those little daughters hatch, they are responsible for going out and finding food. And the first thing they do is feed their starving mother who has spent the last two months not eating anything except some of her own babies in order to support the growth of the rest of the babies. <laughs> that was a fantastic story. Kind of harrowing at times, but very, very, very interesting. And now, you guys can go on Facebook yourself and start spitting the truth. <laughs> All right, let's finish up our ant. So, we have Large Marge. What did we name our ants? Chloe, what did you name your ant? I'm still trying to think of a name. We are too. <laughs> hmm. Well, you let us know as soon as you figure it out. How about you, Molly? We're still trying to think of a name too. All right, well, no problem. How about you, Cecilia? Auntie Auntie, that's so cute. Auntie Auntie, that's cute. That's adorable, I love it. All right, so I guess the last thing to do would be to color our ant. Uh, wait a second. That's fine. I, I, I've got a question for you guys. Um, you guys are looking at your ants right now Look at, let's take a look at Harv's ant for a second. What color is Large Marge? What color do we think Large Marge is? Uh, uh, I don't know. How about you, what do you guys think? Chloe, what color is Large Marge? Hmm, what color should Large Marge be? Red or black? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't Look, think we can really tell, can we? I was we, just we drawing can't. an ant that I saw on in your ant farm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
And I guess that's just to sort of bring our point home is that an ant is an ant. You know, some are red, some are black, some are blue, some are gold, some are green. Um, but they all do ant stuff. It's really hard to tell just by looking at an ant um, what kind of color it will be. Well, that's that's true. That's crazy. I started drawing this ant, had no idea what color it'd be just by looking at it. I don't know if it would be aggressive. It would be nice. I wouldn't know. Huh. That's fantastic, Adam. I guess we uh, can pick whatever color we want because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I think I will make a blue ant. Let's see. Blue ant. There's a winged ant crawling on top of our laptop right now. <laughs> I would love to see that. I'm sure Adam Lucky. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have your awesome equipment. I don't know if I'd call it awesome, but... <laughs> Gosh, I would love to see what kind of ant is on your laptop right now. I wonder if I could take a picture. It's very small. Could the winged ant be very small? Oh, wait, hold on. Winged yeah. ants can be tiny. tiny uh, yeah. to, give you, to give you guys some idea of the difference in sizes of ants, um, they range so much that an entire colony of the smallest ant in the world could fit inside the head of one of the largest ants in the world. Oh, wow. That's crazy. It's moving around. I'm having a hard time getting the picture, <laughs> but it's a little guy. <laughs> well, we've been we've doing a lot of wing dance, though, in our apartment, unfortunately, or fortunately. On the I move. think it would be great, but we can talk a little bit more about what that might mean at some point. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully something <laughs> good. <laughs> you have an infestation. You need to move out immediately. Well, it's, that's only the second one, but to me, that's a lot, so... All right, he is large. If it's Marge. small, you're in good shape. Okay, good. Large Marge is feeling a bit blue today, but you know what? She seems happy. Now, the last thing we need to do is sign our artwork. I need you guys to give it the old John Hancock and make it look lovely. So I'm going to go ahead and sign it. I'm going to pick a fun color. And you know, this kind of reminds me, Adam, of some of the cool stuff we do at our science camp. You know, I was just thinking that too, Har. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be doing some drawing for sure. We're going to get into way greater depth about uh, how some of these life forms around us uh, live and um, how they're all connected and make up this big, beautiful ecosystem that we live. Well, I think if you guys are interested in that in any way, shape or form, head on over to the buzzscience.com and check it out. But more importantly, I want to see your guys' drawings on our website. So, Marley, Chloe, if you guys head over to thebuzzscience.com and go ahead and head to the Contact Us page, you can send us an email, and then we'll get right back to you, and you can send us your drawing, and we will put it on the website. Marley and Chloe, we would so love to show off your drawing, and maybe even your cat <laughs> on the website. We would love to do that. Let's see everybody's drawings one last time because I have got to see this. Oh, look at those big old mandibles. Bee, bee, Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. So cute. I love it. We've got to have that on the web. Oh, look at this. Oh, Molly. That is so great. And what's the name? Do you got to uh, uh, move it down a little bit? Um, it's Antalanta. We've been listening to the Greeking Out podcast, and there's a Greek goddess of war that's named Antalanta. As Atalanta, so we changed it. Marley and her dad thought of Antalanta. <laughs> that is so cool. We've got to have that on the site too. You guys, you did a that's fantastic job. And there's Auntie Auntie. Oh my goodness, you guys are all so talented, and we're so glad to have you on the show. It's been a real delight. Thank you. And if you guys want to tune in next time, I'm sure we're going to be drawing, a sketching, a crafting something really, really special. So we'd love to have you there as well. Yeah. Love to come. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Adam, any closing words for us? Just thank you so much for joining us today. It's really wonderful to be drawing with you. Um, you should know that we're talking about my favorite subject right now, ants. So feel free to ask any more questions. And, uh, 
I just really hope we get to see you again. Maybe on a Saturday morning, maybe you'll come and join us for the summer where we'll get our hands dirty on some really big projects like greenhouses and composters. But uh, most of all, it's just a real pleasure to uh, see you first thing in the morning. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Yeah. We hope to see you guys again. It's been a delight. And from all of us insects down in the microcosm, we're here to say, we hope you see you again.